Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in the San Gabriel Valley today. We are joined by Cynthia Perulin Colfer. She is the superintendent of the Hacienda La Puente Unified School District. Tell us about Hacienda La Puente. Where is it? Tell us about the schools, the students. Sure. Um, it's the jewel of the San Gabriel of Valley. Course it of course, is. it's it's. Um, it has almost 19,000 pre-K to 12 students. Which I must say, as school districts go in California, is on the larger side. It's, a, it's one of the larger yeah, it's ones. It's not LAUSD, but it's no. on the larger side. No, that's the empire to the right, west. exactly. <laughs> and we have about uh, 16,000 adult students as well. Oh, wow. How many elementary schools, middle, we high? Have, we have 32 uh, K-12 schools. Got it. Perfect. Throughout the four comprehensive high schools. A and I want to get a sense of the students because what I think is so unique about Hacienda La Puente is many school districts will tend to be economically similar demographically, mm -hmm. um, but I know that Hacienda La Puente really has a wide range of economic diversity. We do, and and we yeah. have, and we celebrate the diversity of, course, of all of our yeah. students. Uh, some of our schools are almost at 99% free and reduced lunch, right. whereas some schools are at 30%. Right. But actually, the majority of our schools are up anywhere. Our, our student uh, free and reduced lunch is at an average of 74% okay. throughout the district. And what about ethnic diversity? What do we see? Uh, the uh, the largest uh, majority the plurality. of the, the plurality right. is Hispanic. Okay. And then we have um, about 25% Asian right. within. But the Asians, of course, is very different in terms of you right. have uh, Chinese, but you also of have course. Korean and, and Japanese. But some of your schools have done very well. They're well re well regarded, gold ribbon, blue ribbon, yes. whatever it is. So a lot of pride behind Hacienda La Puente. Absolutely, absolutely. I want to talk about the buildings yes. at Hacienda La Puente. <laughs> You know, a lot of schools, you know, those communities kind of grew up in the 50s and 60s and they had to build schools quickly. And uh, are the schools kind of circa 1963? Some are. We okay. actually have our, our grandfather of all, the mm -hmm. La Puente High School, right. which is over 100 years old. Oh my, okay. We actually celebrated their 100th anniversary with fireworks and nice. dumps a couple of years ago for their graduation. But most of the schools are, are upwards of 50 years and above. So are these schools that are older are they charming or are they at a point where it's time to bring them into the 21st century? It's time to bring them <laughs> into the 21st century. Yeah. The, the district with the support of the Board of Education has really done a phenomenal job in the last three years in, 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 in making sure that we address some structural pieces. Right. But when you have 32 schools that are over 50 years old each, it, right. it, it takes a stretch. So let's talk about what the school board mm -hmm. has decided to do. You, of course, as superintendent, do not take political positions. Correct. But the school board has voted five to zero to support what's known as Measure BB. Yes. It's on the ballot in your community on November 8th, very soon. Tell us a bit about Measure BB. What is the school board asking the voters to do? The school board is asking the voters to consider the master facility plan that we took up and, and had a lot of community input in the, in the past spring mm -hmm. to consider allowing us to have 21st century classrooms mm. throughout the school sites, making sure that every classroom that has students and teachers in it have the access to all of these te 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 technology right. and things like that and moving forward so that our students are as competitive in, in, in the real world. And you mentioned technology and I think about the countless conversations I've had with school board member superintendents about how with the California State Standards Common Core, technology is such a critical part of it. When you take this, the, um, it's not, what's the test called? SBAC. SBAC, <laughs> thank you. The SBAC, it's on the computer. It and is. So, I mean, you, our students need technology. Absolutely. And, yeah. and this board sort of made a direction about three and a half years ago, uh -huh. we actually implemented brand new computer labs in every single class, school site in order to prepare our students for SBAC. We added a second computer lab. Um, they adopted an ELA language arts sure. and did a two to one in the classrooms, but we need to really expand the 21st century classroom for access for all. So as part of BB, it's a $148 million general obligation bond. Like you said, bring the classrooms into the 21st century, upgrade, upgrade and replace computers, wireless, uh, computer labs. But that's not all. We do need to bring the buildings into the 21st century in terms of safety, earthquake, um, classroom locks. Tell us about those elements. 
anytime you touch a building now right. that are significantly older, right. you have to comply with the new um, DSA rules, which are Division of State Architects expectations to make sure that all school classrooms are in compliance with current law. Mm. So that's called compliance. And so we want to make sure that every classroom is equipped with everything that needs to be done in terms of safety. You know, removing asbestos, all of right. those things have got to be done. What about, I think about your location, mm -hmm. San Gabriel Valley, it can get hot. Yes. Do you have air conditioning in your buildings? Yes. You do have them now. Yes. Do we need upgrades? Some, okay. some needs to be improved, but the, the previous bond that they did in 2000 was the bond that created all air conditioning I throughout see. the school district. I see. What about athletic facilities? Will the bond address that question? It will help, um, but the, the, the board has been so has just had some such foresight. Right. They actually have upgraded the fields, the track and field uh -huh. at, at the high schools are planning a new swimming pool at La Puente within our budget. Sure. But you know, to, st to stretch out and have a full district uh, compliant with 21st century right. for the experience to be really enhanced for all students. We need a little bit more. Let's presume passage. Sure. What happens on January 1st, let's say 2017? Okay. The first thing uh -huh. is that there will be an application on our on our website uh -huh. to ensure that we have the committee come in and apply for the oversight committee. Oh yes, there is an oversight committee, the which most, I know is important. It's very, right. very important to make sure that we have transparency with regard to how we move forward with the bond, like we've been doing all of our facility sure. plans. Every every month we do a report out to mm -hmm. the board. And then after that, uh, we will uh, engage the the, the district would engage into having architects start mm. identifying what plans we would have and then from there receiving approvals for all of the, the makeup. But what we would do as a school district is to ensure that we are doing work in every single one of the quadrants. Oh. We do cycles. When can we expect construction to begin? So construction would be, well, you would, uh, the cycle would be to plan all of the architects right. to make sure the D Division of State Architects approves the plans. Sure, sure. And then go through construction uh, bids, et cetera. Right. So you're looking at probably maybe June or July that we would really have have a good timeline in terms of starting implementation. That's fast. It so is. could we see construction groundbreakings in the end of 2017? We're hopeful. That's fantastic. I want to ask though about this November ballot. Yes. I am holding the booklet that every California voter gets. I mean, it literally is one for the ages. This is every California voter. Your district's in LA County. This is the LA County booklet. I mean, are you concerned about voters getting all the way down to BB when you have this booklet, you have this booklet, and as part of this booklet, you have Prop 51, which is a statewide school construction bond. Right. And, <laughs> and it is disconcerting, right. isn't it? That's a lot of paper. But if, if the community really wants to ensure that as a whole, their community moves forward, right. that is, you, you kind of want to read all the way down. Let's presume um, Prop 51 passes. Mm -hmm. As I understand it, that could be of benefit should Prop BB pass. Absolutely. Explain that. So you are entitled to access modernization funds if there is state money for it. I see. And so we would have access to almost $8 million in addition to the bond passage. So you could leverage BB's passage to get more money out of 51. Yes. And that's what we did last time. So that is something the voters may want to consider. Absolutely. That the timing is right, and then I presume, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like transportation self-help. If you have your own bond, you can seek other matching funds through the state, feds, who knows what it is. Yes. Okay, her name is Cynthia Perulis Colfer. She is the superintendent in the Hacienda La Puente School District. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are coming to you from the San Gabriel Valley. You're watching Charter Local Edition.